Okay, so it's time for us to figure out what to do when we have two non-right angle vectors uh, and we're adding them together, okay? So, for example, say I want to add 10.2 newtons at 20 degrees north of east and 15.6 newtons at 35 degrees west of north. So this sucks compared to what we were just doing because what we had in the previous example in the last video was two vectors that were at right angles to each other, right? One was north and one was west. And that's at a nice right angle, so we have just a right angle triangle and we can go from there. So what we wanna do is we wanna still keep working with our north, south, east, west type thing. So how do we do that? Well, I'm gonna start by drawing kind of the north, south, east, west. And then I'm gonna draw my vectors on there. So the first one was 10.2 newtons at 20 degrees north of east. What is north of east? Well, if we have 20 degrees north of east, you start east and go up from there. So it'll look something like that, okay? Where that's my 20 degree angle. This is your 10.2 newtons, okay? The reason I wanna do that is because then I can find the x and y components of this vector. Okay, it's going to be so, so important that we can break stuff down into X and Y. So I'm going to call this vector A. And so I want, of course, A, X and A, Y. And that'll really help me figure out what's going on when I have another vector that's not at a right angle. Okay, so let's look at the next one. We have 15.6 newtons at 35 degrees west of north. So I'm going to draw another grid here. Oopsie. Okay, my north, south, east, west. And now we know that we are 35 degrees west of north. Okay, so that is starting north and going west from there. So that's something like that. And that's that angle right there. So that's my 35 degree angle. Um, and here is my 15.6 newtons, okay? So again, same thing, I'm gonna find my x and y directions, okay? So I'm gonna call this vector b, and so there's b in the y direction and b in the x direction, okay? And this is the angle at b, Here's the angle at A, which was the, the 20 degrees, that guy is 35 degrees. Okay, so what the heck do I do now? Well, since I can kind of get all these things into their X and Y directions, then I can just add stuff up in the X direction, add stuff up in the Y direction, and then s use those to kind of find my final force. So Newton's is a measure of force, and no, we haven't gotten into that much yet, but that's what all, that's all you really need to know here. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my x direction. Okay, so I want all the forces in the x direction. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna sum them. So this is a special, very special, special, especially special to me uh, symbol. This is called a sigma. Okay, so I'll just write up there. Means sigma. Okay, or is the Greek letter sigma and it means to sum or the summation. Okay. So when I say sigma f of x, that's saying sum or add together all the forces in the x direction. Okay, so I want to add the force, uh, or sorry, a in the x direction. And actually I just said add, but Let's take a look at this. So A is heading to the east. The B in the X direction is heading to the west. So I need to define a positive um, direction. And since I kind of already did it, I'm going to go ahead and say east is positive. That means I should actually subtract B in the X direction from that. Okay? And so that's going to get me my net force in the X direction. And then I can go on to the Y direction. Okay. How do I get A in the X direction? Well, here, 
and the x-direction is um, in the adjacent side. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to take a or the 10.2 and multiply it by cosine of theta. Okay, because it's adjacent. So it'll be a times cosine theta. I'm going to call it theta a. And then, of course, b in the x direction is the opposite side. So I need to use sine for that one. So that's going to be b times sine theta b. Okay? So that's how I get them specifically into their x and y directions. Okay? We use the um, ratios that you've been using a lot. Remember, I'm doing a lot of work here that I'm not actually showing. So if you really want to know how to do this, of course, you set up your um, ratio first. And you would see that that would be adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's A in the X direction divided by A. And then when you rearrange it, you get that guy. Okay, so just so you know, that's how I'm getting that. Okay, so what does that look like? Well, A again is 10.2 newtons times cosine of 20 degrees minus vector B was 15.6 newtons times that sine of 35 this time because it's the X direction is the opposite side this time. Okay. And there we go. So we can just calculate that, and we sh you should get an answer of 0 0.64 newtons. So just a note here, this is positive. So what does that mean? It's positive. So therefore, my net force in the x direction is going east. Because I defined east as positive. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing in the y direction. So I want to sum all the forces in the y direction. Again, I have to define a positive direction. Since north, since both of these I have north and north, I'm going to go ahead and say north is positive. And I want to sum all the forces in the y direction. So again, for A in the y direction, that's going north, so it's positive. And for B, it's also going north, so it's also positive. Look at that. Okay, so I'm just going to add those together rather than subtracting them. And then we're going to do a similar thing. So A in the Y direction is now on the opposite side. So I'm going to take A, the hypotenuse, and multiply it by sine of theta A. And that should get me A in the Y direction. And then opposite with B, B is in the adjacent side. So I'm going to take the hypotenuse, B and multiply it by cosine of the angle for B, okay? Okay, so let's plug our numbers in here. We, again, A is 10.2 newtons times sine of that angle was 20 degrees, plus my cosine, or sorry, my angle, or sorry, ugh, I can't talk. Vector B was 15.6 newtons times the cosine of 35. There we go. I finally got it out. Okay, if you calculate that, you should get 16 newtons. Again, it's positive. So what does that mean for your sign? Or what does that mean for our direction? That means it's going north, right? Because we said north is positive, so therefore it's going north. Which also makes sense because that's both of these vectors have like a north portion and they don't have a south portion so if it wasn't going north that'd be weird okay what the heck does this mean it means that our final force has like a little bit in the x and a lot in the y direction okay so i need to use these two numbers the 0 0.64 and 16 newtons now to find my final force so what does that look like uh, so first thing you want to do is draw a new vector diagram. So we had the 0 0.64, just a little bit of force in the x direction, and then a lot of force in the y direction. Okay, so that's what we had, and that's our vector addition. So of course, if I want to figure out what is that overall force, I need to use Pythagoras now, because now I have a nice right angle triangle, and that's why we do the sum in the x and y direction. That's why we break it up like that. So then we can do the final bit of uh, figuring out what it is with math that we know how to do, okay? 
So of course we're going to use Pythagoras to figure out the force. So that's just a lot of plugging in numbers here. Hopefully you don't need me to explain uh, Pythagoras at this point because, well, we've been doing it since what, grade seven? Something like that. Uh, just another reminder, make sure that you're not actually putting these rounded values into your calculator. Try and put um, the previous answers from your calculator because they'll get you a more accurate value. Now, it's kind of weird because you get 16. Here you get 16.2798 newtons. So it is actually larger than the 16 we got for the y direction, uh, but not enough to actually show up on our six significant digits. So these two forces, the x direction basically cancels out and we just have y direction. Okay, so the uh, other thing, we need to find the resultant force. Force is a vector. So anytime we're doing this, we also need to find the angle because this is just giving the magnitude, not the direction, and we do need the direction, okay? How the heck do we find that? Well, I see that my angle is right here. So if I take the tan of that, that's Fy over Fx, okay? And then I should be able to get that angle there. I know it's going to be pretty darn close to 90. It's, it's a big, big angle, but we know it won't quite be there. So again, it's really important that you don't use rounded values because those rounded values will mess you up in this um, when you're calculating this. Okay, when you do that, you get an angle of... 88 degrees and then what is this direction well we're starting east and then we're going north of that okay so that is going to be north of east yay we did it okay so this is one of those questions where it's a lot of work but honestly you're using the same method every time so do a bunch of them and like honestly you'll have it down in no time Let's do one more though. So now we're gonna do three vectors. Are you guys ready for this? So same first step, break all of them into their nice little diagrams where you can see how the X and Y directions are going to um, combine. Okay, so I'm gonna already know, I have three vectors, so I'm gonna draw three vectors here. Honestly, it helps you visualize everything, so please do it. So vector A, I'll call this guy A here, uh, is 50 newtons at 30 degrees west of north. So that means you start north and you go west of there. Okay, so that's actually kind of like this, and that's that angle. Okay, so I'm going to call that theta A, and this is uh, vector A. And again, we want our x and y components so we have one our y component is going north okay and our x component is going west we know that because it's going west of north right so that needs to be made up of a north vector and a west vector okay the next one let's do in green we'll call that b so we have 70 newtons at 25 degrees south of west so again here's our west Here's our south, so south of west means start west and go south of that. So it's going to look something a little bit like this, where that's your angle. Okay, so that's theta b. Uh, and then again, remember, we got that means we have a x component and a y component. And since it's going south and west, then our x should be going west, right? And we'll call that b in the x direction. And then, of course, our y direction should be going south because this is a south of west vector. Okay, and finally, we have 90 newtons at uh, 15 degrees west of south. So we're still working with our west and our south here. Okay, 15 degrees west of south. So you start south and go 15 degrees west of that. So that guy's gonna look something like that. Okay. And so there's uh, vector C, there's the angle right there, and we know, so therefore it's going to have a south vector and a west vector, okay? So there's angle C, there's C in the y direction, 
and C in the X direction. Okay, wow, doesn't this look fun? Well, don't let it stress you out too much. So again, we're doing this exact same thing as we did in this last one, okay? We just have an extra vector now. So I'm still gonna start by figuring out my forces in the X direction and then my forces in the Y direction. So let's start there, okay? So let's start by summing all the forces in the X direction. Which way do we want to say is positive? So if I look at my X directions, I have west, west, and west. So I'm going to go ahead and say west is positive. Because I mean, why the heck not in that case? Because then we're just adding them all. So I'm going to add A in the X direction plus B in the X direction plus C in the X direction. No subtracting here because nothing's going east. Okay, how do we get A in the X direction? So if it's on the opposite side of the angle, you multiply it by sine. If it's on the adjacent, you multiply it by cosine. So here for A, it's on the opposite side. So that's going to be A times sine of theta. B, X is on the adjacent side. So I'm going to multiply that by cosine of theta. And then C, X is on the opposite side again. So I'm going to multiply that by sine of theta. Okay, and then I plug those in. So A was 50 newtons times sine of 30. B was 70 newtons times cosine of 25. And C was 90 newtons times sine of 15 degrees. There we go. Okay, so uh, just another little reminder, plugging this into your calculator, put brackets around each uh, thing that you're multiplying, and then put addition in between so your calculator knows, okay, just do the all the multiplying first and then do all the adding. It might know that already. Sometimes calculators know stuff and sometimes they don't, but just be careful. So, if you do that, what do you get? You get 112 newtons, okay? Obviously, you get something with decimals, but I'm just going to keep it there for now. Just keep that answer in your calculator, okay? Okay, we're going to do the ex exact same thing for the y direction now. So I'm going to go ahead, okay, for the y direction. Again, we want to have one positive direction, one negative direction. So if I look at this, I have A is north, B is south, and C is south. So this is going more north than south, um, but it really doesn't matter if I make this, po which I make positive or negative. So let's just go ahead and make north positive. Like, why not? So the forces in the y direction, I'm going to skip this first step and just go to right to writing down what they are. So A in the y direction would be A times cosine A to A. So another little tip here, if you use sine for the x direction, you're going to have to use cosine for the y direction. Okay, but we also can see that y is in the adjacent spot. So of course we need to multiply it by cosine. B, that is in the opposite direction. So we're going to multiply that by sine of theta. And C, the y direction is adjacent again, so we're going to multiply that by cosine of that angle. Okay? And then this looks very similar to the line above, except for all the sines are switched to cosines, and all the cosines are switched to sines. So once you get the x direction, oh, wait, 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 I did something wrong. Let's go back, let's go back, let's go back. So never mind, it's not as easy as you think. Because guess what? B and C are going south, and we said north is positive, so I need to subtract those. Oh, Miss Waters. What do I think I'm doing? All right, so let's just make sure we have all that correct. Hopefully you saw that, and you're looking going, Miss Waters, what the heck are you doing? Okay, let's keep going. But other than the signs... Uh, all these trigonometric identities, everything else should look pretty much the same. Okay, you just have to be really careful about what sign you're putting on things. Put subtraction when it's subtraction. Oh boy. Okay, so 
we calculate that. What the heck do we get? We get negative 73 newtons. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, since we said north is positive, this is obviously going south. Okay, and then this guy is obviously, obviously, obviously going west because there was no other option. Okay, so we have a west vector and a south vector. So that's what I'm going to keep in mind drawing my vector diagram on the next slide. Okay, so we have west, that 112. There's my force in the x direction now, and then we had a south going vector, and there's my force in the y direction, and there is my resulting net force. So that's what we need to find, okay, is that net force. So now we can do that. And we always want the angle here, by the way. We always want the angle between the first thing I draw and the last thing I draw. That's always the angle we're looking for. Okay, so force, again, Pythagoras. It's not that complicated once you get to this point, right? It's getting to this point that's so complicated. But once you get here, this is just like, oh, yeah, yawn. I've done this a gajillion times in my life. So hopefully that's what Pythagoras feels like to you at this point. You may have noticed I didn't put a negative 73 in there because, honestly, once I square it, it'll be positive. And now that we know that it's going south, like, we're good, right? That's what the negative is there for, just to tell us that it's going south. Okay, what do I get? Well, if I do want to put this in significant digits, let's double check. We have 2 and 2 and 2 and 2 and 2 and 2. We need two significant digits. So it's actually going to work out to be 1.3 times 10 to the 2 newtons, okay? So there is my force, the magnitude at least, but is that the whole question? Is that the whole answer, I mean? Absolutely not, because we need the vector. We need magnitude and direction. So I need that angle as well. And of course, I'm going to use it using tan of theta. Okay? So like I said, once you get to this point, it, things start getting really repetitive so honestly just do this kind of question a million times and you it's going to feel so easy it's just a little bit tedious but eventually it's just going to feel so so easy so just keep at it keep practicing and uh, you'll get real good okay so what do we get for our angle we get 33 degrees but what are our directions? So we start west and we go south of that. So that is south of west. Okay, and there we go. We have the whole force. We have the direction of the force, which of course we need. So we got what we need and there we go. That is that. So um, yeah, I did a separate video for this just because yeah, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of new stuff. But like I said, it starts getting very repetitive. So as long as you know the process, you're going to be able to do this kind of question no problem. So good luck with the practice there.